Good morning and welcome to our Unlocking Knowledge Transfer webinar series. Um, we've designed this webinar series to really highlight different aspects of knowledge transfer and R&D throughout the Irish system. And we really want to highlight supports available to Irish companies and Irish researchers. So this morning's topic is um, Ireland's transition to Industry 5.0. And we've put together a really great panel for you this morning. So our speakers, I'm going through them in alphabetical order, uh, Donal Carroll, CEO of the National Advanced Manufacturing Centre. We have John Durkin, Senior Digital Transformation Specialist at Enterprise Ireland. We have Sean O'Regan, Acting Head of Unit Industry 5.0 at the European Commission. And we have Kathleen O'Regan, Senior Environmental Advisor at Enterprise Ireland. And our moderator for the discussion this morning is Vincent Wall. So just before I hand over to Vincent, the structure of the webinar this morning is going to be a panel discussion and we would welcome any questions that you may have. You'll have a QA and a um, panel on your screen so you can submit your questions there and we will post those to our panel members. And also just to highlight that this webinar is being recorded this morning and the recording will be available through the KTI website following the, the webinar. So with that, I'm going to pass over to Vincent. Thanks indeed, Siobhan, and good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us again. I'm really looking forward to this, uh, this particular topic, Industry 5.0, or Industry 5, as some people uh, call it. I might come to you, Sean, uh, Sean Orego, in, in Brussels first, from, because um, Industry 5 is, 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 is a newly evolving concept across industry, but it is also being driven to a large degree by the European Union. What is your definition of it? What, how do you describe it? Uh, thanks, Vincent, and good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to be with you. So, I mean, Industry 5.0 really comes from the fact that digitalization is transforming European industry. It's accelerating industrial processes, and it is also changing the role of workers. So really what Industry 5.0 is about is capitalizing on this digital transformation um, to realize the potential that it, give, that it gives rise to, to increase collaboration between the creativity of humans and uh, new smart systems through emerging technologies. So it's really about seizing the opportunity uh, to combine uh, the greater high-speed accuracy of industrial automation with the skills of humans, uh, you know, in particular, their cognitive ability and the capacity for creativity and critical thinking. So in a way, this allows the, the, the company to, to focus, uh, assigning uh, more monotonous, repetitive and even dirty tasks to the machines while giving responsibility to the workers uh, for the creative value adding tasks. And so it strengthens the company's competitiveness. And this essentially is why we, we, we put this human centric approach at the heart of Industry 5.0. Rather than seeing workers as a cost to the business, Industry 5.0 sees them as an asset that can support the business in its development. Um, so it's about using technology to increase the creativity and diversity of skills of industrial workers for the benefit of the, of, of the business. So workers become more empowered in this way, and this in turn leads to productivity and improvements for the business. Did, did, and Industry 5.0 also brings benefits in terms of enhancing uh, sustainability. Here also we can capitalize on digitalization in a way that, that enhances circular processes that allow uh, reuse, repair and recycling of resources. So in this way, it helps to reduce waste and limiting the negative environmental impact. And then the third element of, of Industry 5.0 is enhancing the, the resilience of industrial production. Um, it's really about capitalizing on technological development and on human creativity to balance the current very strong trend towards increased globalized uh, production with strategic value chains that have the adaptability and the flexibility to respond to disruptions and other unexpected events. And the, the, the COVID pandemic il illustrates exactly why we need this greater resilience from industry. So in a nutshell, that's what Industry 5.0 is about. Okay, thanks, Sean, for that very comprehensive overview of what Industry 5 is about, 5.0 is about, with that particular European Commission uh, drive behind it as well. And we'll be back to you, obviously, to, to delve more into some of those particular aspects in a moment. But I might come to you, Donald. Donald Carl, uh, Chief Executive of the Advanced Manufacturing Centre, uh, which is supported by the IDA. Tell us exactly what AMC is. I, I know it's just physically been put in place now in Limerick. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, thanks, Vincent. So the 
the AMC Advanced Manufacturing Centre, it's a, it's a national centre to essentially support Irish-based industry um, to adopt and particularly accelerate the adoption of Industry 5 technologies and practices. So designed as a, an, a help to industry, um, and that's covering everything from multinational companies to um, small and medium enterprises, um, also academia, um, and really open to collaborations to try to, I guess, um, move the whole ecosystem along, um, not just specific individual companies, but to, to lift manufacturing towards the, the goals of Industry 5.0. It's going to be a, a big physical space resource mm -hmm. uh, 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 on the, the technological campus in, in, in Limerick. When, That's right. when do you hope to open the doors? Yeah, so um, we're, I guess there's two parts um, of an answer to that question. So the first one is, you're right, we're a physical building. Um, so there's 30,000 square feet in Limerick, which is dedicated to advanced manufacturing um, and all of the people and processes that go with that. Um, but we also have um, what I would call a, an outreach as well, where we'll be working with companies um, in their premises, essentially to deploy these technologies and actually to work with them on transformation. So our expectation is the physical building will be, um, it's being fitted out right now. So we expect over the summer that we'll start to open the doors to people. Um, and in advance of that, we're already engaging with companies. So we're having discussions with groups of companies around how can we support them to better develop their own processes around Industry 5.0, but also how can we essentially get people starting to think more collaboratively and to start thinking as a, I guess, as, as an island in terms of what we can do for Industry 5.0 and um, to lift that whole ecosystem. So we're doing that right now, but the official opening of the building towards the back end of the summer. And do you see advanced manufacturing, the advanced manufacturing center, both in terms of the physical space and the outreach programs that you described there, as advancing that broad framework of what Industry 5 means, as, as Sean outlined at the top? Yeah, I mean, I think Sean gave us a, a great intro into the, let's say, the different pillars of Industry 5.0. And, and I think as a contrast to the technology alone, it's really interesting and exciting and, and validating, actually, for me to hear about the the, um, let's say the emphasis on the human centric aspects, but also supply chain. Um, I have a, a long background in manufacturing technology through my career. And I think one of the challenges we always had, and I would have worked in the technology companies, was the deployment on site when you actually came to meet the people who were going to use this technology. And for me, that, um, that kind of workplace culture, that whole skills agenda for advanced manufacturing, um, that's one of the pillars that we need to address and AMC will be addressing. So while we be, um, let's say stacked full of the best technology we will also have the best people there and one of our pillars will be to help companies develop their workforce culture um, then the second part is also to integrate with supply chain and we will have a supply chain team there as well to again start developing things around that resilient supply chain more open supply chains and integrated supply chains and taking more advantage of digital transformation technologies to build a more flexible supply as i said resilient supply chain and and effectively to make companies better places to work, to be better community citizens in terms of what organizations do in the community, um, and also to, I guess, engage more in the environment in a proactive way. So we see all of those things as being fundamental pillars, and the National Advanced Manufacturing Centre will support all of those with resources and with um, expertise um, around how companies can move towards that. And before I come to John about the whole digital revolution that we need in Ireland that's underway, you know, will AMC be available as a resource for, for SMEs as well as for larger multinational and domestic companies? Yeah, very much so. Um, and I think actually some of the most exciting advances will probably come through SMEs and how SMEs then further engage with both academia and with um, multinational companies. But for us, the, the SMEs are a core part of where that um, probably the agile manufacturing comes from in terms of their ability to, to move quickly on some of these topics. And, you know, it's really our wish that we will end up with, as I say, those communities of practice where we will have groups of SMEs, large companies and experts from the AMC working together to try to bring the agenda for the whole of industry. So not really segmenting it into one group or another, but actually to move the whole of industry forward. And for us being able to work with as you said, we're set up originally by IDA. Um, we know Enterprise Ireland are there as well to support these things. We really want to be able to work with all of the agencies and with these companies to help get the right funding pointed in the right direction um, to, again, build that whole collaboration across the different types of companies. And that for us is where we'll find our success when we see SMEs in the supply chain with multinational companies and all of that developing, again, towards those human-centric and environmental goals. 
Thanks, Donald. Coming to you, John, as Enterprise Ireland's digital specialist, I, I, I assume most enterprises, large and small around the country, are some way along on the digital journey, but it's it's probably a, a mixed track record to date, is it? You know, how would you characterize where companies generally in Ireland are on the journey and how they might fit into this industry five concept ecosystem? <laughs> Good morning, Vincent. Good morning, everyone. Yes, I would agree very much. So we've seen with the with the companies, it's a broad church, I suppose, approach on where companies are at digital. So you take the ICT companies, they're well on the journey, as you would well imagine. A lot of the traditional sectors in manufacturing and food are starting off on that. Some startups have done some really interesting things, like in the ag tech space, we're starting to see some really interesting uh, technologies coming in and digital adoption. But as companies now start to understand the technologies and the advantages that are coming out through digital and what it brings. You're starting to see production lines starting now to use it to optimize their processes. And we often see kind of that as the first step as digital as, as the first step in time to optimize. And then when they build their, they get familiar with digital technologies, then they look then to move into the transformational side that they're building some of the capabilities they see, they do it in maybe one or two small projects, and then that opens them up to the potential. And then they see how digital can really help a business scale. So what we've seen with a lot of the companies we've worked with is there's a, a gradual building awareness around digital at the moment. It's kind of a lot of through webinars like this, awareness building information. A lot of them too are interested in talking with peers, you know, companies of similar size within that and I think that's something like Donald talked about there this idea of bringing people together is I think will be really powerful and having a centre like the AMC will, will aid that because you're going to get the smaller companies in particular seeing some of the challenges that are there and some of the great technologies that are coming to with some of the larger ones and interestingly enough we're also seeing the whole idea of supply chain and sub supply chain that whole area now is really becoming a, a, a key focus and obviously recent political uh, events and, uh, and and health and that has really focused in on that. So that area too is going through a rapid transformation as well on the supply chain side. So again, digital can rapidly help within that as well. But the key thing that we've really enforced in is what we like for the Industry 5 is very much around the people skills piece. And while we talk about the technology, we're having a really good conversation with companies now about where do you start with your skills? How are you looking at the staff that you currently have within your business? Is there people there who are interested in maybe learning a new skill, starting out to trial something out? You know, do a bit of trial and error, dip your toe in the water, trial things like that. And that's really the place that we're trying to move along the way and, and, and hopefully uh, build on that over the coming year. Kathleen, if I could come to you, because you're, you're Enterprise Ireland, one of Enterprise Ireland's advisors on the environmental side, and, and, and as, as Sean outlined at the top, uh, the whole uh, move towards greener, more sustainable uh, business, the circular economy is a critical element of, of Industry 5. Where, how would you characterize Irish businesses' uh, acknowledgement that, that, that they have to become more sustainable, and where are they along the journey, do you think? Um, yeah, look, um, thanks, Vincent, and look, um, it's great to be here this morning. Um, so I suppose companies are at various stages, I suppose, in terms of the sustainability journey, and we find that some companies are more advanced than others, such as perhaps in the construction or food sector. But other sectors aren't, you know, as advanced, and to date, they're probably really concentrated on, you know, on, on, on quality and, and, and health and safety. For example, if a company was supplying into the health service or the, you know, the aviation sector. So sustainability hasn't been kind of up front and centre there the way it has in other sectors. Um, and then we see that companies that are looking at sustainability, you know, a lot of companies are focusing on the kind of carbon mitigation, the energy efficiency, the conversion to renewables, which is, which is essential and important, but there isn't as much focus, I suppose, then in terms of the whole kind of circular economy and moving away from the, the linear take, make waste. And I always refer back to a report that the Ellen MacArthur Foundation um, launched, and it basically said that, you know, 55% of the, we can only reduce greenhouse gas emissions 55% by becoming, you know, converting to renewable and becoming more energy efficient. You know, the remaining 45% comes from how we make and use products and how we make food. So 
there really is like, you know, the need there for companies to, yes, concentrate on carbon mitigation and becoming more energy efficiency, but also then to kind of focus on the whole kind of circular economy and look at, at their business to see how can they, you know, introduce circular, you know, a, a business model for their product or their service. And this, I suppose, is where Industry 5 can really drive that and enable that. And just the examples given there by by Sean and Don and I suppose John as well. I mean, um, we see companies now starting to use digitalization in terms of becoming more resource efficient and, you know, looking at your supply chain, I mean, transparency in the supply chain and having a, a you know, that flexible um, supply chain is, is crucial. So this is, I suppose, and bringing just kind of the, the people kind of centric focus into, into the equation really means that, you know, Industry 5, as I said, can just drive that whole kind of sustainability of that green transformation that's required. I'll put a question to you, Kathleen, and, and, and I'd be interested in your take on this as well, uh, John. Uh, to what degree is this, you know, transformation or, or change on both the digital and, and sustainability side within Irish industry, to what degree is it coming from businesses knowing that it's conceptually it's 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 what they should do or to what degree is it coming because uh they need to do it to compete or die or they need to do it because either their suppliers or customers are saying you got to do it or we'll change i think it's all of that um definitely it's coming from the supply chain and we would see that across all sectors so up until about two years ago it probably was mainly food and construction but now we're seeing a risk you know, um, professional services companies that are supplying into the big corporates and, um, you know, all different sectors really now are being asked about their sustainability credentials. And then, you know, it's in the media, it's in the news, we're hearing about it all the time, we see what's happening in the world, you know, people work in companies and, and people, you know, want to see that their employer or their company is doing something in this space and want, and we see that in, in Enterprise Ireland and, and John, I think, attests to that as well, you know, employees, it means a lot and to retain employees and to attract new employees, I think it's important for businesses from that perspective as well. So I think it's it, it's all of those, those for, for, for for sustainability and I'd say digitalization. That's a critical point, John, isn't it? Not just competitive in terms of your profit margins or whatever, but in terms of attracting and retaining talent. Yeah, very much so. And, and like what we are seeing now is some of the companies who would have been more digital natives had been on that journey and started doing the prepping. Other companies is really come where their suppliers, they're parts of the supply chain and the larger companies have already adopted digital and now they're expecting their sub suppliers to be able to supply into them digitally, interact with them digitally, exchange information, give transparency into where orders are at. There, there's a higher level of expectation now that was there. And a lot of the smaller SMEs now are really starting to have to adapt quite rapidly to be able to win new business and also to sustain uh, existing contracts into the future. So, so, so there's, that's been driven there around that as well. And, and what, we dis, what we did in Enterprise Ireland uh, towards the end of last year was we launched a digitalization voucher, it was 9K, 100% funded, that was to help companies take a strategic look at their business about where digital can really aid them. And it, it was very much to get the mindset to think differently and to look at that value add for, for digital because it is such a transformational piece and the value it can give to companies is massive. And, and it helps you retain new staff then as well because you, you're getting them to new opportunities to upskill. You're taking away some of the very mundane tasks that's there. And also we're starting to see quite interestingly like sectors, traditional companies like an engineering or food, they're starting to hire a software developer or a business analyst or a, a data person. And, and so you're bringing in new skills into a business and this in turn is bringing in fresh ideas and new opportunities. And so again, that's opening up new, new interesting um, arenas for people and new skills that are going to start coming up in different sectors as well. I might just pick up on that, uh, Sean, that, that point, that those points that John is making there, because to, to an outside observer like me that doesn't have my finger on the pulse on, on exactly what's happening on the, on the factory floor uh, at the moment, you know, a lot of people would have seen the, the move to digitalization in particular as a move towards greater uh, efficiency uh, and, and, and perhaps reducing the human resource cost of businesses. Uh, you, to what degree then is you know could it be argued that industry five is would is a nice to have in terms of a human centric focus but that in fact most businesses are digitizing because it's it's actually to cut costs and become more efficient 
I think certainly there can be an impact on on costs, but it's it's it, it's it's quite a short sighted view to 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 see it just from the point of view of what happened on the, on the factory floor. Um, if you look at the kind of trends that dig digitalization is giving rise to, uh, the, the demand for greater customization of products, um, the, 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 the need to be very adaptable and to, to be able to, to, to change your, your supply chain, uh, the, uh, a, a purely cost and efficiency driven focus uh, will, will miss out on that opportunity. I think a, a second aspect is that a lot of companies and particularly uh, SMEs have great difficulty with this approach of by moving straight to digitalization, um, they, they run into resource capacity issues. Um, and where Industry 5.0 can help in that regard is that rather than applying the technology, it engages the workforce in the way in which the technology is brought into the company and applied. And so in that way, it can actually uh, help the company to achieve its dig digitalization faster and in a better way that, that's, that suits the company. So uh, if... if, if the pure efficiency driven focus it was fi is fine in the short term, but if you look at the, the trends, the wider trends that are that, that are, are are out there in terms of uh, what what the customer wants, uh, the need to focus much more on sustainability, then the the, 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 the narrow efficiency focused approach to digitalization uh, can, can be a, a dead end. And is this a, a realization that you're finding is coming from from business itself, uh, both large business and small that that efficiency per se isn't sufficient. I, 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 I saw a conversation, a very interesting conversation you were ha having with a, a, a venture capital uh, podcast platform. When venture capitalists are interested in, in a particular concept or ecosystem, it, it means you know, uh, that, that, that there's a very strong commercial value there as well. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, that's the way it, it, it is going, even in the the the. the, the pure digital industries like the Internet of Things, they're, they're recognizing that uh, the, 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 the efficiency rate of, of approach just is, is, is very limited. So absolutely, I mean, to go right back to uh, five or six years ago, there was a, a survey by Accenture that showed that over half of, of company executives felt that there was going to be a need to, to take a more human-centric approach, to take a broader approach to how digitalization is uh, being applied in companies, and that those companies that took this broader approach uh, the human-centric approach would be much more successful in responding to the challenge of innovation and becoming the innovative, innovative companies of the future. Donald, have you any thoughts on, 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 on that particular issue? The yeah, very much so. I mean, I think that it's been um, really brought to the fore over the last number of years, especially during COVID, where people would have recognised in their supply chains that supply chains that were built for efficiency um, weren't really that resilient when it came to the requirement to change where you source products or the number and type of products that you bought and sold. Um, so I think that we'll see in addition to the, let's say the need for efficiency, there's that need for resilience in supply chain. And it's not really the same journey for manufacturers. You know, you, you can't really address resiliency by um, absolutely kind of taking every last kind of item of waste or let's say of optimizing opportunity out of every factory. So I think we've seen that a lot more in the last six months as people reevaluate that global supply chain and the realization that people make better decisions when they have all of the information and are looking more broadly than if it's just about how do I make my little piece be much more efficient than it has been in the past. Um, and I think we've also seen that then manifest itself on the human side of things where the digital transformation approach where you're actually looking at more flexible supply chains, the ability to respond faster to different things. Um, this brings more interesting jobs and starts to actually lift the from lift manufacturing from commodity based stuff, which is what technology is good at, um, and start moving people's contribution to manufacturing more into the creative space, um, more into that resilient space. And how do you build some redundancy into your supply chain so that things keep running um, no matter when and what's thrown in your direction. So I think the learning of the last few years has been um, over the long term, you need resilient supply chains and that means you need a better approach than just leaning everything. Um, and I think technology gives you the opportunity to have the best of both. You can have a very slick organization and let's say um, low waste type organization, but you can also keep that resilience and creativity for when things pop up, which weren't in your original planning. Can I keep producing? Can I keep serving my clients? Those kind of things. So, so for me, that whole shift towards bringing human creativity back into the topic is one which is very welcome. And I think companies are starting to embrace that because it's not enough to be lean. 
and in, in broad terms, is that how you would uh, describe how Industry 5 is a next level on, but complements Industry 4? Um, for me, exactly. And, you know, when you start thinking about the manufacturing as a kind of having multiple stakeholders as opposed to just the shareholder of the manufacturer and the stakeholders being the employees as well clearly as, as customers and shareholders but also community and the environment so planet earth has a lot to say about how well we manufacture and how we approach it so for me putting those things front and center and i think to kathleen's earlier point you know when you start hearing about the need for circular economy from your customers your supply chain from your employees all of these people then it starts to hit home and people say, okay, if I want to have good employees, I need to be addressing these topics. If I want to have good customers, I need to be addressing these topics. So literally, if I want to stay in business, um, I have to be addressing these topics. And I think that's all really positive. Um, it, it changes for the better. Kathleen and John, um, you know, hopefully most companies are already on this journey or at least aware that they need to start, but, you know, they need support. They need support both in terms of financial incentives, as, as, as John was mentioning earlier, even just a, a voucher to, to do a kind of an overview and audit as to how best to move on, but also support in terms of upskilling, training, changing the mindset of, 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 a, of a workforce and a management team. I might start with you, Kathleen, just, just what kind of supports from the circular economy, sustainability, climate change elements are out there? Yeah, um, so look, there's a range of supports out there for businesses, depending on where they are in their journey. But for companies that are really starting out in their journey, I'd actually recommend they check out the um, climate um, the climate toolkit for business, um, which was launched just there in December by the government. And it's designed to be um, easy to use for companies to calculate their basic carbon footprint for their own operations. So they just put in their, their energy use, their you know their waste, their water and travel. And the toolkit will actually calculate their carbon footprint. It will also give them a detailed you know, action plan or a roadmap and it will link them then to the different supports that are available for, from the different agencies, whether it be Enterprise Ireland or SAAI or, or the EPA. So it's a very good place to start. Mm. Um, SEAI then have this 2,000 euro energy audit that can go, you know, for SMEs. Um, it's 2,000 euro voucher, sorry, to go towards an energy audit for SMEs. They have a free online training academy and they have a range of capital supports from Exceed to Better Energy Communities. So definitely worth checking out the SAAI website. Skillnet launched last year, a climate um, action um, Skillnet. EPA have a green enterprise fund for circular economy activities, so it's a call out that they have every year. And then the agencies, Enterprise Ireland, IDA, Udross, local enterprise offices, has, have a range of supports, um, training, capability building and consultancy in terms of lean, which was mentioned, green, digitalization, which John will talk about, you know, we've, RD&I offers, um, so there's a range of supports there. So just in terms of, I suppose, the actual green supports and the climate action supports from Enterprise Ireland, um, we launched a climate enterprise action fund last year um, and it was part of the climate action plan that was aligned to that. So there's three different levels of supports. So these are a mixture of new and existing supports. Climate action voucher, which is a two day fully funded support. Green Start, which is a seven day, 80% funded grant support. And then Green Plus, which is generally is carried out over 12 to 18 months. It's up to 100,000 and the grant is, is up to 50%. But the supports are there for companies to get a consultant in. And we have a green directory of service providers to really build the capabilities within the companies. So I think that's where we need to kind of start with and, and, and work with companies, no matter what stage of their journey they're on. So the voucher, for example, can be used to develop an initial, an initial action plan in terms of, you know, decarbonization strategy or a more broader general corporate sustainability strategy or actually you know looking at kind of circular economy activities in the company and to see to carry out a gap analysis and to see what you know what opportunities are there for, for businesses and then green starting green plus then a wide range of activities generally are supported there from implementing you know carbon management system really getting to grips with kind of carbon footprinting not just the operations but also the value stream from the raw material to the the end product upstream and downstream and um, companies now are really looking to you know understand their you know their greenhouse gas emissions aligned to the greenhouse gas emission protocol which is kind of seen as the gold standard for for carbon accounting understand the environmental impacts of their products and processes through life cycle assessment you know looking at energy management, water stewardship, sustainable packaging, sustainable logistic, and getting the help and the guidance and just building the capabilities internally. So with Green Plus, 
the expectation there is that companies will align to international standards. And this is really important, obviously, for companies that are, that are exporting or that, you know, this is what their supply chain expects, that they're aligned to international standards. And Green Start then is kind of a step back. So it could be companies that, you know, the resource use doesn't justify the cost of having this ISO standard in place or the supply chain isn't looking for it, but they'll still benefit from having these good management systems in place, but they're not necessarily to an ISO standard. So there's various different levels of, of support that are there um, to, to help companies. Very significant and comprehensive support. Thanks for outlining that to us, uh, Kathleen. The same on the digital front, uh, John, I assume, across a range of, 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 of agencies. Yeah, definitely. And, and very much very similar in that way. And I suppose one of the big things we're looking at the, on the digital support side is really about the capability building and, and, and the person centric approach it, it, we see is very key for the digitalization of it. And actually, it complements quite nicely. Kathleen outlined a lot of the 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 changes and the information that's been captured. And when you add that with digitalization, you've got the digital tools that helps you get insights into all that information that you're capturing on it. So we, as we mentioned at the start, we have the digitalization voucher, which is open to any company over 10 manufacturing international trade services. Great way to start off to understand your business and, and create the, the, the mindset to start thinking about it. What we often look at then is we have the exploring innovation. So this is a really nice offer for companies who are going to start out on the journey. They're not really sure what they want to do. It's a 70K at 50% funded. And this allows them to go off and do prototyping, do some trials, do some more research, all a very open grant. And it's there really to, again, encourage them to help them come up with a better project um, and, and to fund and to give, give some steer on the next best steps on digital adoption within their business and then following on from that then of course we have our traditional r d supports which is if you're developing a new product or service there's a lot there around that and again we're focusing very much there around capability building so you've got consultancy you can bring in that will add value add and help upskill the teams as part of that and then we have a, a very strong offering operational excellence and this merges together business process change along with a very much a strong focus on training and capability so very relevant for industry 5.0 and this really is driving the capability building and people-centric approach on training supports and it's not day-to-day -day training but very much capability training looking at new skills relevant to the new projects and the new way of doing work so very very good offer there that's that really helps on the training side and of course i think one of the the key areas we have then on the research side which is very important for particularly for a lot of smes wanting to start off on this journey is we have the innovation voucher which is which is their 5k to get involved with centers and uh, the tech centers tech gateways all of those and then we have the innovation partnership which is a real kind of a, a larger grant it can be up to 80 percent funded depending on your scale where you work in collaboration with a re, with a technology center or technology gateway or, or, and very much about building up that capability within the business so there's there's a huge array of it out there and then obviously on the kti itself there's some excellent resources on the website and i think siobhan will mention that a little bit at the end but again, there's huge support there. And I would say to any company, if you're with IDA or with Infras Ireland or Udros or with the Leos, go and talk to your local advisor, you know, your business advisor. They will put you in contact then with the key people within each agency who will give you a really good stare about the funding supports that are there. But from an Enterprise Ireland perspective, we're very much around focus now on digital driving adoption and also the capability of the staff and really helping to to build up the, the people skills, very much so. And as you mentioned, John, and as Siobhan, no doubt will mention when she joins us again in about 10 minutes, a lot of that information, if not all of that information as to where to go and the, and the right type of support for where you are and what you're planning to do on the Knowledge Transfer Ireland uh, directory uh, of supports on their website. Um, Coming back to you, uh, Donald, because just on, on on the question of support, I have a I have a question here. I mean, we, uh, do 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 will will you when you're up and running from the autumn, will you support innovation vouchers or other forms of of, of financial support in terms of how you interact with 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 client companies? Um, yes. Yeah, so. In summary, absolutely. Um, so we, there's a number of ways people can get funding to participate with AMC. Um, but one of them is that AMC already has core funding and we will be essentially building out technology standards and platforms for people to engage with. Um, and, and that's on a participation basis. So you turn up and you can talk to us about how they might apply in your own circumstances. Um, and then after which we can talk. Sorry, sorry Don, when you say you can just turn up, you literally just 
make a phone call and rock up make a phone play. call and come and see us yes so it's um not a membership type organization where you need to pay to to play and um, this is literally turn up and see what we have and see how it might apply to you um, and from there, if you want to do something a bit more specific or um, where there's a bit more to it, then that's when you would engage with your, your agency, as John said, whether that's EI um, or IDA. Um, and we can work together with companies to see what's the best way to put that together, either one to one basis or maybe with a number of collaborative companies working together. Um, and we hope to have some examples of all those things and how they run in the next couple of months that we can share with people to show the, let's say, the template of how this might work to people's advantage. The whole question of, of, of the human centric and, and creative element as to how uh, human beings, specific workforces complement what, what greater automation and, and digital technology uh, brings to, to business generally and to manufacturing specifically, uh, Sean. Um, I, I presume this, this uh, creates a lot more potential uh, for, for collaboration and participation with with our educational uh, establishments across Europe and, and with research groups there? Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, we're working closely on this with the European Institute of Technology, their, their manufacturing uh, community, and they're actually reorienting their uh, business education and training programs in line with, with Industry 5.0. Indeed, there, were, there wasn't a great deal of change required to be moving in that direction, which was interesting to see. So that's, that's all, that is certainly being uh, uh, lined up. And we have, at, at European level, of course, we have the, 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 the uh, skill strategy and uh, the digital education plan, which are all focused on uh, increasing significantly uh, the, the digital skills levels uh, across Europe. Um, and then through our, our, our framework program, Horizon Europe, um, we've uh, already had a, on the, in the first call, we had a topic on skills for industry 5.0, which was very heavily subscribed. So we'll continue, I imagine, in future work programs to develop that, that aspect and to see how we can uh, encourage exchange of best practice and development of the appropriate uh, skills to match for industry 5.0. I presume, Donald, as well, when Advanced Manufacturing Centre gets up and running, you'll be involved in, in collaborative programmes with, with, with researchers in our, in our third level and fourth level campuses? Um, very much so. Yeah, I mean, we hope to start that quite soon um, because the AMC will have, um, I'd say, quite an applied way of working. So we will really need that collaboration when it comes to research topics and to developing, let's say, new knowledge around some of the science of both manufacturing and technology. So very much looking forward to collaborations with um, universities, um, actually both in Ireland and abroad. Uh, just the same question to yourself and, 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 and Kathleen, John, uh, before we come to, to some of the questions that have come in, and thank you for them. The whole question of Industry 5 might lead to the creation of, of different types of jobs that might have applied in manufacturing and other businesses in the past, but they will be a way of, of attracting people into industries that mightn't have gone there in the past. Yeah, very much so. Like we're, we're seeing that already on the digitalization side and it's it's been very interesting. Like one of the companies have started now bringing in data scientists and AI experts as they're starting to look at robotics and self-driving vehicles. Now, if you had said five or six years ago, would they have done that? Those skills would not be in-house. Now, they're small teams, but they're building it up. But what you're interested in seeing too is you're seeing people who traditionally would have been AI and analytics people who would have maybe been the fintech sector or something else, they're looking at the manufacturing industry and saying, oh, this is cool. This is robotics or something yeah. different. I can apply my, my techniques and skills in a different way, very much so. And, and so we are seeing this kind of cross movement of, of skills and moving in and, and leveraging those new opportunities. And I think it's a really exciting thing now that's starting to happen in, if you're looking in particular manufacturing, you've got AR, VR, you're looking at the the robotics you're looking at ai you're looking very much at the whole I I iot world and connected devices and sensors and cloud computing and this is this is all bringing these technologies together and creating a huge new opportunity for people to get involved in this and as well what you're starting to see is the colleges are adopting now the universities to changing the way that the skills programs are starting to come together and we're starting to see also the launch of micro credentials so you might have somebody who's in manufacturing who's there and they've got an interest in robotics they can now go off and do a two or three month micro credentials and learning a piece of robotics or maybe learn about how to put a sensor onto a device and get 
data off it. So all of this is starting to increase that capability within staff. And, and, and one of the recommendations I would give to a company is if you're looking at this and you're about to start off the digitalization journey, go and have a chat to your staff. Understand your staff. See, is there some people who are looking for a change, who are open for a change, and maybe make them as kind of the catalyst for change. Because when people see how they're adopting, there's a real opportunities there. And, and that's something I think is a real good way as a first step in, in helping out on this. Great point. I presume you'd, you'd echo that, Kathleen. Yeah, and, and I suppose, look, the agencies have supports for companies, whether it be in lean or digitalization or green, and we're actually finding that, and um, John, you probably agree, that some of the consultants actually are specialising in all these different areas. So we have consultants that are helping companies in the environmental area and in the digitalization and in the lean as well. And what I've seen in the some of the environmental applications and green applications that are coming in is that typically it would have been kind of the production manager, the facilities manager, the operations manager that would have been that kind of project champion. But now we're say Green Plus can support the salaries of up to 10 project team members. We're seeing the finance person, we're seeing the marketing person, we're seeing procurement, all you know, training and in, in, in green, and it's the same with say digitalization. And it's 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 kind of those micro credentials or those different supports. I think is just, you know, giving those capabilities and, and to, to the companies, you know, internally, but it's across all the different areas, you know, um, which, which is great to see. Thanks, Kathleen. Just coming to some of your questions, and thanks indeed for sending them in. Some of these questions, just me looking at them here, uh, Donald, are quite technical in terms of some of the, the technologies you may apply. So I think the best way of dealing with that would be to send those on to you directly after the webinar so that you Perfect. can get back to the questioner if that's okay. Uh, I think this is one for you, uh, John. In the context of manufacturing, perhaps Donald as well, how do you describe the difference or similarity between automation and digitalization? Yeah, so it's a very good question. I, I suppose the way I tend to look at it is that automation is often the first step in what we talk about kind of traditional lean processes. So you're looking at what you've got there, you're looking at your business processes, and you're trying to see the ways that you can automate to help really streamline and maximize out your existing within that. And then with digitalization then is taking a different approach, is looking to build on that. What are the new ways you can do it? Can I add in sensors? Can I can I enhance my product and service? Is there ways to make this better? For example, you know, you might automate your production line and get it down to very fine. There's no waste. You minimize everything you can. But you might then say, well, actually, if I put a little sensor on this, I can now do a reading with this or I can bring on AR, VR to do remote uh, fixing of devices through local people on the ground and doing it based in Dublin or Sligo or wherever that would guide a, a, a technician on the ground in, say, in the US to go and fix it like that. So what you're doing with digitalization is the new value add and the new ways that technologies can add and what you have there. So I tend to look at it in those two ways. It's kind of a very simplistic approach, but, but that would be the way that I would look at it at least. Before, before I let you go, John, uh, just a question we should have tapped on before, just in terms of the resources that are available, but that are always coming, also coming down the line, just the European Digital Innovation Hubs. We exactly. will have a number of those in Ireland within the next 12 months. Correct, exactly. So, so, the, so the European Union has launched this in European Digital Innovation Hubs right across Europe. So there's this areas of expertise which are really spread across the continent, very much focused on building up capabilities for SMEs and large companies. Ireland will have at least two and, and hopefully three to four over the next 12 to 18 months. And they are, again, centres where people can come together and learn about digital. And the aim around it is to help build awareness of this and look at opportunities and they will work with the likes of AMC and others as well in this area. So very collaborative approach that we're hoping to take in Ireland around these European digital innovation hubs. And really the power is that you can connect in and leverage expertise right across Europe as well for your business. So it could be a real game changer for a lot of companies. Looking forward to that indeed. Uh, I'm looking at the time, folks. We have a minute or two, so I might come back to you to finish, uh, Sean. Uh, I have a specific question for you first, uh, and then I might ask you just how we might see uh, more publicity, I suppose, or, or action on the part of the European Commission itself in terms of promoting this whole uh, 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 Industry 5.0 concept throughout the... I think you're, you're starting an award scheme, but come to that in a second. Just one question. Uh, the EU through Horizon Europe supports uh, research and innovation activities on Industry 4 and 5 with industry involved in test beds, pilot lines in collaborative projects with third level organizations. Do you have any comment on that? So. Uh, test beds, pilot lines in collaborative projects with third level organizations. I suppose that's one way of getting that concept out there. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's it's it, 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 test beds and and, and lighthouses and and, uh, and pilots are certainly one way of of of, the, of developing the the the. The art of, of industry 5.0 to understand uh, what works, what is good practice, and where the bottlenecks are, and that's something I think in the next phase we'll be focusing very much on is seeing, uh, getting the word out about what is good practice, and uh, trying to see how we can help where there are clear bottlenecks that are, are identified, uh, what we can do to support them, particularly if, if there if there can be uh, tackled at policy level. So um, indeed, we're we, we just now uh, closed the first ever in. Industry 5.0 award, uh, very strong response to it. Um, that will, of course, give recognition to the pioneers of Industry 5.0, but it will also provide us with a snapshot of the state of the art. So yeah. I think we will certainly be pushing forward with that. Um, and we're about now to uh, launch a number of, of workshops with, 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 with industry leaders um, to look at the agenda uh, for how we can start to implement Industry 5.0, starting with the thing called the low low hanging fruit and and, and really moving forward uh, from that um as i said in the the the, the cause of of um uh, horizon europe in addition to the, to the continuing work on, on the test beds we would expect a further calls to look at different aspects of of industry 5.0 um, and of course, we see already in private sector players picking it up. We we now have the first ever uh, venture capital fund uh, launched by Momenta Venture Capital, targeting specifically uh, European SMEs, 100 million uh, euro fund. So that that's an, an, another way in which it, it will be uh, rolled out uh, with a lot of communication being done uh, by the venture capital community on the advantages of, of Industry 5.0. So yes, a lot now is it will be happening over the next in the coming months to to push out the concept, to communicate, and to begin to tackle what are the issues with Industry 5.0 and where we can see good practice. Sean, Donald, Kathleen and John, thank you very much indeed for a very informative and dynamic discussion on what is a very exciting area. Siobhan, back to you. Well, thanks. Thanks, Vincent. And thanks again to our panel for that really interesting discussion this morning. Um, we had a lot of content to cover and I think you did really well to, um, to get through it in in our time that lasted this morning. Uh, so I just wanted to pick up on the panel had mentioned that there are some supports available through Knowledge Transfer Ireland. And on our website, you will find an R&D funding tool, which lists the main funding supports at Irish and European level for Irish companies and researchers. So there's a lot of information there. We do have supports as well to help companies to access the right expertise available throughout our Irish universities and institutes of technology. So that's a really, great resource to be able to navigate the system. So there are a lot of resources available to knowledgetransferireland.com um, and I hope you'd have a look at that. We'll also be sending around an email after this website which will list any of the supports that we've mentioned this morning um, so you'll find some information on that and we would also welcome any feedback that you might have on this webinar and any suggestions that you may have for future content that you'd like us to cover as part of this webinar series. So um, please do respond back to that email or get in touch with us directly we'd love to hear from you our next webinar is going to be on the 10th of may and we're going to cover the topic of open research and intellectual property so we hope that you can join us for that on the 10th of may so thanks again to our panel this morning and thank you all for for attending and with that we'll bring our webinar to a close thanks Paul.